Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a lovely day. In this following tutorial, I'm gonna teach you on how to set up Red Live inside of Wadido. So if you are a VTuber, you want to have a free app that tracks your face with ARKit, you know, cause this app is iOS only, keep that in mind. But you also wanna have it where your iPhone can also have hand tracking. So let's say you struggle to get the webcam tracking working, or you don't have a webcam, or you, don't even have a leap motion either or do you want to have like a sort of feel for the leap motion with your iPhone until actual leap motion support is added to Wadido which will happen in the future. Um, basically real life combines both iOS uh, and face uh, so iOS hand tracking and face tracking together which is really nice. Um, I will say though in advance this app is not in English though. There is no English support for it. It's in Mandarin. Um, so please uh, keep that in mind. But I will do my best to try and guide you through it. Again, I don't know every single translation. Please refer to the Wadido documentation as that one properly uh, translate and explains the whole entire app. But I'll still show you video demonstration wise in case you get lost in the wording. So basically uh, what we're going to do first and foremost is that we're going to go ahead and set up the real live app. Uh, that is the first thing. So what we're going to do, uh, for your case, you're going to go ahead and type this into the App Store and you're going to download this. Kind of the future here. Um, so during the whole video editing, I realized that real life kept trying to dox me every time. Now, I mean, I don't mean like, oh, someone's hacking my phone. No, what I mean is, is that the app kept showing my IRL face too much. And during the video editing, because it was way too risky, because there were too many areas, like even small areas, areas where the um where my screen capture kept like making my face appear so much uh so because of that i'm only going to show you via screenshots and i will do my very best to try and explain the settings i highly recommend please check out the documentation on Wadudo as a it's a lot more safer and it's there but either way though um i'll have like an image right here so basically um to basically start off though, um, pretty much in the app, if you press on the top left button of the app basically, you will be greeted with some settings basically. And uh, I will say there is no English support for real life. So that's the reason why it's recommended to read the documentation from Wadudo because the app has no English support and probably never will. Who knows? Um, so basically, um, on the top area of the app, um, it's, you know, the top where it says IP, that's going to be, of course, your local IP. It's not your doxing information. No, it's not going to dox you if you show it. Um, that's just an IP. You can change it, actually, anytime you like. Um, so there's that. You need to make sure that that number is a match to Wadudo, so that way it can work. Now, there are two switches here, which should hopefully be highlighted for you. So, um, pretty much the one on the left is referring to wireless, and then the one on the right is referring to wired. If you want your iPhone to be connected via Wi-Fi, um, please use the switch on the left. However, if you have very weak Wi-Fi signals and you prefer to have your iPhone connected via USB, so that way you don't have to really use Wi-Fi, um, then use the switch on the right. However, iTunes is of course uh, required in order to use it. So if you don't have iTunes, then please install iTunes and make sure your phone is connected so that way it can work. Also, the USB cable needs to be connected directly to your PC for the other switch to work. But that's for the right one, otherwise choose the left one for the most part. Depends on you basically. And uh, pretty much though, there are other settings uh, that are on the app as well. Um, in my case, it for some reason did not work. I'm not sure why. Again, you can check the documentation regarding like the different settings and see if it maybe worked for you. Uh, but otherwise, in my experience, it ended up not working at all. Again, uh, you know, it's all different. But either way though, just want to at least elaborate those things. Also, if by any chance, uh, after you made sure that your, uh, c you know, your IP on the phone and Wadudo are a match and you still don't see your character moving, uh, you know, it could be a firewall issue. Uh, so you can definitely check your 
PC's firewall, but also I would recommend at least wait at about one to two minutes ish, depending, uh, because there possibly is. Especially if you're a first time user with real life, there's going to be a pop up message that's going to ask uh, for permission basically. If you see that pop up message uh, that appear on real life after you're doing the whole connection, you must say yes. Otherwise, if you say no, uh, then it's going to reject. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work at all basically. So yeah. So you're gonna have to, you know, make sure you say okay to that permission message. But otherwise though. Um, we can go ahead and continue on with setting up your tracking settings. Um, it actually now connects. If by any chance you don't see that message, you might want to re-download the app uh, or try again basically. But basically that message is referring to like a firewall for the iPhone basically. And this is also what I'm referring to that the hand tracking can be a little bit of a derp. But again, to each their own, you might end up liking it. Um, you know, again, everyone has preferences and such. But basically, as you can see, it's working. Um, and then um, pretty much what you can do, of course, you can set up the settings so you can calibrate here in case you're in the wrong position. Uh, if you feel like your blend shapes are too stiff, you can go to the configure blend shape mapping here. So uh, let's say, for instance, my uh, blinking needs to be a little bit more heavier. You can mess with, like, let's say, output, for instance. Well, that actually did the opposite. Um, so let's say here, actually, my bad, it was the input. Um, so basically, I can make it so this value is a smaller number. This one you don't touch. Unless you want to, like, again, make the output bigger. But even then, you usually don't touch the output. It's usually the input you touch. And basically, as you can see, um, my blinking is a lot, a little bit more heavier, basically. But again, mess with the settings however you want, though. Um, mess with the numbers, experiment, depending on your preference, basically. But that's if you want to make your blend shapes a little bit more expressive with real life. Um, also, for draw open, I'll make it so it's 0.7. Uh, so that way my mouse can be open a little bit bigger, but then I'll have to mess with the other blend shapes, but yeah. But either way, though, um... So you can do that. Now, um, of course, let's say for instance, um, you're using real life and you feel like your movements are too stiff. What do you do? So to start off though, let's say you want to increase your head rotation. So what you're going to do, um, these are based off of your constraints basically, which is really nice uh, in case you want to move more at a certain angle, but move less at a certain angle basically. So X axis is referring uh, to your nod ability. So the higher the number, the more you can nod, uh, but the less the number, the less you can nod. So, you know, play around with the value. So just click and drag and it should increase your rotation range. Y axis is referring to what the way you're looking left and right. You can go ahead and increase that value however you want. Mess with the value. You don't have to copy my settings or if you really want to, I don't care. Um, and then z-axis is referring to your tilt. So if you want to tilt more, then increase the value, and there you go. You have more head rotation. Um, and of course, maximal is referring to like uh, pretty much your max, basically. Um, so you can of course increase it, but again, to each your own. Usually the default settings are fine. Uh, rotation offset is if, if you feel that your head is placed in the wrong way, like you feel like it needs a little bit of a correction, then you can actually, um, you can set like a sort of offset. So let's say I want to set mine to be negative. You can have it where my head's over here or increase it. So it's like there, so you can like fine tune it. I usually don't use this too much, but it depends on how you set it up. Basically eye movement intensity is that if you feel like your eye movement is too limiting, uh, you can of course increase it. So X is referring to when you look left and right. And then uh, Y axis is, re is referring to up and down basically. So there you go. Um, and then eye movement compensation, this is referring to if you are rotating your head, if your eyes are going to be looking a certain way. So as you can see, like if I have my head rotate like this, uh, if it's set to zero, then usually I'll have it where my eyes are like straight ahead. But you can have it where if you increase the value, it will look at the camera basically, or at least looking in front. So yeah. Um, it's mainly, it's mainly like when it's looking in front, basically. Kind of make it a little bit more natural. Um, this is only supported with bone eyes, though. Um, otherwise, 
if you're using blend shape or UV eye, it's not gonna work. Um, well, it, it's supported at the moment, but yeah. Uh, eye blink sensitivity, if you feel like you need more, um, if you need your eye blinking to be a little bit more sensitive, then you can increase the value. If you, by any chance, feel like you're either like derping so much, like they're doing this sort of thing, you can allow um, linked blinking so that way you don't wink at all. This is pretty good if you are someone who don't casually wink as much and you want to make sure that your blinking is consistent, basically. Limit eye squint is that if you sort of smile, it will just basically limit the eye squint, basically. So, yeah. And then use bones for eye movement. If you're, let's say, if you're a Void model, then you need to make sure you have this on if you use HANA tool. Otherwise, if you do actually have um, eye blend shapes, which I personally like eye blend shapes, then I would set the uh, use bones for eye movement to be no, and then I set it to be for blend shapes. That way, as you can see, my eyes are actually moving a lot more, which I'll also have to set up the intensity to be less because blend shapes, I like the result of it. Uh, but again, it's a matter of preference, basically. And then, of course, real life has the body movement intensity. So if you feel like your body movement is way too stiff, then go ahead and try to increase this a little bit more. And it can kind of, um, it can kind of help give a little bit more movement to your body, basically. Again, it's still a little bit stiff, but again, play around with the things however you want, basically. So yeah. Um, just a bit of an editor's note. Um, so basically. Uh, if by any chance you feel like your tracking is a bit too sluggish regarding real life, then here's what you need to do in order to reduce the smoothness if you feel sluggish. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into blueprints, you're going to click on, let's say we're going to do face tracking. So go here on face tracking and what you're going to do is you're going to try and find the node in regarding to smoothness. Uh, because, um, yeah, so basically here where we can actually decrease the smoothness so our face tracking should be a little bit faster. Uh, of course, keep in mind, real life is naturally pretty overly smooth, but pretty much you can just like crank these a little bit down so your tracking should be a little bit faster. Um, and even for like um, the body tracking as well for the hands basically, there is also a smoothness rotation for that too as well, basically. So hopefully your tracking can be a little less sluggish. It's not perfect, again, because real lives, you know, the, na the nature of its tracking, it's pretty overly smooth. But it should help a little bit if you feel a little bit sluggish, though. But pretty much, you can also try messing with the in-app things. I mean, there's not much, uh, but it is worth probably messing around with it, basically. So, yeah. But overall, though, pretty much in a nutshell, that's pretty much how you can set up real life inside of Wadudo. And that's pretty much, you know, you can be able to have tracking and, of course, hand tracking with your iPhone. So it's pretty nice. Um... But otherwise though, um, of course, if you by any chance still have issues with connecting real life to water door or anything like that, uh, then it would, be, it would be recommended that you actually go into the water door Discord server. I sadly do not know the, I sadly do not read Mandarin, so I don't understand real life's settings or anything like that. The creator of water door does understand Mandarin, so they can, of course, help you out, uh, regarding real life settings and such. Um, or if you're, again, having connection issues, they can, of course, help you out so please join the what do discord server uh, if you have any other issues regarding real life um, but otherwise though if things have went really well then i hope you have fun with real life overall and yeah uh, that's all i really have to say though i hope you have a lovely day and i'll see you guys next time bye bye